So friends, welcome back to Muscat in Oman. <laughs> yes, yes, back here. <laughs> that was some crazy adventure. So I'm in. Now I'm back normal person not half legal <laughs> anymore it is what it is and i'm back in oman and i got already my ticket to egypt in five days time problem was that i wasn't able to find hotel easily because for some reason probably they're overfilled already but for some reason my cheap hotel is not available anymore and other cheap hotels neither and they are very expensive hotels only cheapest is for 18 or 20 euros 18 plus taxes so almost 20 euros per night which is a bit crazy but I managed to find somebody on Airbnb uh, some student or who knows whom uh, for 10 euros a night, a shared room. Far from ideal, but for 10 euros a night. But the thing is, I have to wait now. I applied, but I have to wait for approval from him. And only then I can leave this place. So I, can, I need internet to see when he approved. And also to get the address how do I get there because there is no address so we'll see it's already getting dark the whole day spent in a very funny way <laughs> but yeah hopefully I'm getting somewhere to sleep this evening so I'll have some mandarins which I still carry with me from yesterday <laughs> and maybe we'll continue uploading a video for you i'll see what's for my job should be some things which needs to be done urgently as well and i'll be doing these things while waiting for that airbnb approval which hopefully will come soon so friends that's the airport and my adventures continue <laughs> ah, that's crazy it wasn't that simple guys I was thinking that the man will accept uh, my payment and I have a place for the next four nights and the last night I will probably spend in airport because it's too early and no point uh, it will be difficult to get here probably with taxi only which is expensive and uh, less sleep so no point i'll spend it in the airport because uh, so in the airport there are nice places where i can sleep easily so that man declined i was waiting already quite a few hours i did some good amount of work so that's all good but it was already quite late when that man declined so i was looking what other alternatives are there and nothing really good what i did find was another even a bit cheaper nine euros per night instead of ten alternative for two more nights three days from now like i have two more nights somewhere and then i should have those two nights if he accepts he might decline as well who knows we'll see and then i was looking what can i do in these two nights normally when you do it ahead of time it's not so difficult but once you get thrown like this out of pakistan <laughs> uh, then it's a bit trickier because i need it as up and it's not so simple sometimes so what happened i found a hotel 
for 18 plus taxes so it's something like 20 euros per night for the night not this night but next night which starts tomorrow evening not a very good price but okay for one night will be okay but I decided to half that amount <laughs> because for this night the cheapest was something like 50 something euros which is ridiculous because of course it's already today <laughs> so what I decided to do I looked on my satellite maps and I found that there are a few places usually the big intersections of highways are very good places where nobody goes nobody has any need to go and there are, they are often like untouched you can go in and find a place where to put your hammock on and I looked on the forecast it will be at coldest moment will be 21 degrees at night so <laughs> good enough I won't be cold and no rain of course so good enough I just need a place where to hide and where to put my hammock on which is an issue because there are not many trees around in this climate but uh, along these highways you see they like these palm trees and even more trees and I think they must be watering these places as well uh, these are cacti this is not grass even so basically my idea is to split the hotel bill in half I have 20 euros for the next night which I will spend in reasonable luxury but for this night I will have zero euros hopefully if everything goes smooth because I will spend it in my hammock <laughs> and I will not even waste any money for bus because I will go halfway to my hot hotel to one of the six places which I marked on my map which might be good from the satellite imagery uh, for hammock so one of them should work I hope and yep I hope to spend my night there I did everything and downloaded everything from internet got some food as well not the cheapest option but didn't have anything and won't have everything either further there no shops around here so I got some food and full bottle of water of course from the tap in airport and uh, yeah I hope to find a place where I can stretch my hammock spend my night for zero euros and tomorrow from one o'clock I can check in into that expensive hotel spend one night there so then average would be 10 euros per night which is exactly my budget one zero euro night in hammock and one luxury hotel night for 20 together will be 10 per night on average so that should be good enough I could of course uh, go because I'm a little bit tired and it was tempting well quite tired I should say <laughs> and it was quite tempting to fork out bigger money and get the hotel for this night as well but I was looking on my budget and after the recent mishaps or bad lucks or stupidities or call whatever you want <laughs> I lost some money in Abu Dhabi and now with a big hope of huge savings for the next two months in Pakistan I bought the expensive ticket and PCR test well expensive <laughs> cheap for that thing but expensive for my budget and it's all wasted now I'm back in Oman <laughs> deported from Pakistan if it's deportation I'm not sure 
something of that sort. So yeah, now basically I am quite close to being at the point zero when I won't have any more savings which is the situation which I definitely don't like because I always tend to have some buffer money which I never touch normally well not never touch but I, I just I just don't I always keep it and if it runs low like it is now I do something like I'm doing now going in the hammock instead of hotel like these three two trees down there these would be reasonably good Marhaba. but they're too visible and a little bit too far apart as well for my hammock but yeah, yeah uh, I have some better spots down there let's keep walking and a nice moon shining today so yeah when I see that my reserve money is starting to go low I am getting quite aggressive in terms of saving I can do many things and that's what gives me peace because I know that I always have more options in my arsenal how I can save money there are loads of things which you can do none of them are too pleasant <laughs> that's why we normally don't do but you can do it to save money and to get back on track and I reckon if I now spend this night in hammock and then the next night as planned as I told you now and then I have my cheap ticket already to Egypt and if I get to Egypt in one piece within this budget which I was uh, talking about with uh, quite low expenses and food money in that case I should be reasonably well off because in Egypt let's walk here maybe I don't know if that car stopped because he thought I'm in trouble or whatever or I'm making some trouble for the drivers or maybe they're just talking on the phone in any case let's just keep walking I think he was looking at me maybe he wanted to offer a help these people are very really nice people I don't have to be very suspicious about them thinking that they have some bad intentions usually if they if they stop like this they just genuinely want to help you but no no not this time sorry because I don't want to lie and to tell the truth where I'm going will be a little bit disturbing for him so, <laughs> so let's not get into these conversations I was thinking that I'm luckier than I expected to be uh, it's quite dark do you see there is a trail down slope and in the darkness they seem to be like bushes to me but when I went down it turned out that they are reeds so no use <laughs> for my hammock and also it was quite unpleasant to walk there in the dark because I can't really see where I'm stepping and I don't know about the fauna of this area so well especially about snakes so I'm not exactly sure I have to be careful but yeah that place didn't turn out to be good and let's keep walking I was thinking that that place I saw it on the map and it looked like it won't be good enough that's why I didn't mark it I remember it and it really isn't good enough so I'll keep walking and let's go to the next place which is my first marked place and see if it's any better 
So friends, we are approaching my first spot and that is this thing. You see where the highway goes? It makes a circle and go th goes down there and beneath this bridge. And these circles are very often the best places for hobos. <laughs> I'll have a look and then I'll decide if I stay here or if I go to one of my next spots in search of something better. Yeah, friends, sorry to disappoint you or probably more myself. <laughs> but that place was no good. There are some kind of place which would be almost usable, but nah, not good enough. And I have time to walk, it's okay. And I'll be walking tomorrow the same direction towards my hotel anyway. So I could do it now instead of later. And I'm pretty sure that those places, next places, which I have marked, are better. They looked better on my map and there were more as well. Well, friends, I just finished my dinner of a properly, legitimately nasty food. You see, I'm even ashamed to admit I ate it. Potato chips or crisps, however you call them. To call them crisps are okay, but to call them potato crisps would be a huge overstatement. Ah, that wasn't good. And imagine, that was the best that I was able to pick at that shop. The best. There was nothing more edible there. But that's okay. I have plenty of tap water to wash away all that nastiness. <laughs> and what's the matter with that car? Are they waiting for me? Then it's not good. Maybe it's a good idea to hide. I don't know what's there in their minds. Better not to be visible. I don't know this culture so well. So, yeah, it's not end of the world, of course. But I just wanted to share that not always things are extremely good. Sometimes you just have to do whatever you have to do to survive. Sleep in a hammock. Be a hobo. <laughs> and eat nasty crisps for your dinner because there is nothing better except tap water. I have walked already for maybe one hour. Tiny bit less maybe. And I have maybe 20 minutes more. 15 at least and then I'll be in that place which I hope will be better now then friends I'm approaching to my spot number two you see that circle around here on ramp is it called how do you call them in English but I saw from the satellite that there are quite a few trees in there and these circular shrimps <clears throat> they usually give enough space so you don't have to sleep exactly at the carriageway so you can go deeper and it's more quiet yeah the problem with these trees and plantings they are all watered irrigated they are obviously planting them for the maximum effect so they are scattering them and they often plant them in one row you don't have them close enough together for a hammock and sometimes they're in one row it would be close enough but it's visible from both sides and it's not good then beautiful moon there but let's see if i can find something which can 
be made to work. Look friends, it turns out I am in a landmark. Muscat International Airport. <laughs> I never knew I was behind that sign. Well friends, you probably don't see almost anything. If I climb up the tree, I didn't find any trees which are two together close enough for my hammock. So I climb up on the tree and found a tree where branches are spread enough so I can spread the hammock between them. Good night, sweet dreams, my friends. Well, good morning, my dear friends. <laughs> this has been a very, very good night. <laughs> I actually enjoy this place so much that I don't want to leave. It is already something like half past eleven. Sun is very high already. Although it's cl cloudy today. The first day with clouds in Oman in my experience. And the rain has... Sorry, rain. Wind. <laughs> no rain. Wind has picked up as well. Uh, during night it was very calm, but now it's quite windy. But yeah, this is some good spot. I have already done some good bit of work and other things uh, on my tablet. And I think I'll stay here until I'm, I have time to go to my hotel. To change my hobo night to my luxury night, which will be the next one. But I'll show you where I am. Look, that's my hammock. And look what's there. <laughs> uh, I can't show you even. I'm quite high up in the tree. You see the neighboring tree? I'm. Uh, it has also branches like that. And I have hammock like between those kinds of branches. It's on that end there. And that end is there. Can I show you? Uh, I can't see myself what I'm showing you. And it's a nice and beautiful place. It's a bit noisy because of the streets. I'm right in the middle of circle of that on-ramp. But it's nice. It's really nice. You see the uh, irrigation lines there. Everywhere. Like literally everywhere. Irrigation. Without that nothing would be growing here. Uh, maybe in here you can see now the trunk of the tree w uh, up, up which I climb. <laughs> and there's my sausage bag down there. <laughs> I dropped it <laughs> some hour or two hours ago. I was using it here in my hammock as, as a pillow all night. But in the morning when I started to move more uh, well, it wasn't even in the very morning, but some hour or two hours ago, <laughs> I dropped it. <laughs> but I won't be climbing down. There are no people walking around, so it should be all good. And whenever I will be leaving, I'll pick it up. And yeah, there's my other stuff hanging in the branch near me in easy reach. <laughs> there's my crocs. <laughs> Uh, the only trouble besides noise was which was here were, were the mosquitoes you see the blood stains uh, from mosquitoes where I accidentally uh, pressed against and killed mosquitoes <laughs> in the dark I didn't see it even there were tons of mosquitoes and because of that uh, highway noise you don't really hear them in the dark uh, during night and I didn't know there was there were mosquitoes so I didn't hear them but I just feel that uh, everywhere it's itching <laughs> and then when I turned the light on I didn't want to turn my light on I climb up here without any light 
the, there's yeah highway by the way there's that circle on ramp and the big highway is on on that side uh, can I show you it mm, can you see it kind of kind of so when I, I didn't want to turn my light on because uh, that then I become very visible and somebody could spot me from some car and report maybe to some police and I just wanted a peaceful night instead of explaining somebody why am I sleeping in a tree <laughs> uh, but without light there is very little chance that somebody will ever notice me uh, the first thing is nobody really goes inside of this circle between the on-ramps. No need for anybody to come. Although I see some trails, so obviously somebody has been coming here. But there is no big traffic for sure. That's one reason. Another reason is I'm quite hidden in these leaves. Is it acacia? some kind of legume tree similar to acacia or robinia or something in any case this tree is is hiding me you see uh, there are some amount of leaves in all directions from me so i'm not so well visible and my hammock from the bottom is green as well so i blend in quite nicely and especially when it's dark and people don't usually look up when they walk around so I can easily imagine that somebody might walk here on that trail he might see that sausage bag and notice it <laughs> but I think he might not notice me even because people usually don't look up when they walk around so they wouldn't see me here so I think it's a very very good location in terms of uh, being unnoticed I probably reckon I even if needs be I even could leave my uh, camp like this uh, sausage bag in my hammock and go away for the day to explore and then come back in the evening to climb back up here and uh, Although it would be difficult to climb without hammock because I used it as a rope. I threw it above the branch because the branch was too high for me to reach it. The lower branch. Anyway, the idea was that uh, I probably would be able to even leave this place as a camp up here and nobody would discover it during day. And I could live for more than one day, m more than one night here. But yeah, what I was starting to tell was that when I turned my light on to see why everything is itching <laughs> I saw thousands, oh, I'm ex exaggerating, many, many, many mosquitoes everywhere. <laughs> and then I realized, okay, <laughs> it's like my childhood fishing in Latvia's rivers. <laughs> So what I did, I took out from my sausage bag all the clothing which I thought will be good against mosquitoes. So I had these very thick, extremely thick socks. I put them on uh, and uh, I put my pants in the socks so there is no place. And and these pants are quite good. They, they, they <laughs> These mosquitoes didn't get through and when it's in so nothing was biting me there galabea is quite good as well it's quite dense material so they unless it is really stretched against skin like like when it's stretched properly like that uh, they can't bite through it's very when it's stretched over my elbow for example they were biting through but then I took my galabea off and I put a jumper under the galabea which was actually good because it was almost cold during night it was good 
but uh, yeah when you are asleep in even 21 degrees without blanket feels cold uh, although walking here I was sweating like crazy but sleeping it got cold uh, but uh, with jumper it was good so and when there was jumper under the galabea mosquitoes didn't get through and then I have a balaclava on my head uh, whose neck I tucked under my galabea as well and even then I covered my face with a spare t-shirt otherwise there was no rescue from those mosquitoes it was crazy but uh, that t-shirt worked I was able to breathe through it and two layers of the t-shirt fabric was good I have one t-shirt which is a little bit thicker almost like a jumper and yep that worked fine ah, and on my hands I'll show you see on my hands I put put it back on I had it off already I have these glo gloves uh, leaving uh, in when was it November from Ireland it was quite cold already and I, I don't have a lot of warm clothing so these things and uh, balaclava and another hat and thick socks they don't take much space in uh, my luggage but they do add a lot of comfort if it's cold that's why I carry with with me but now they were really a rescue because it was again the, the these gloves are thick uh, so the mosquitoes didn't get through and I tucked my galabea sleeve inside of them like this <laughs> so they didn't get to me at all and after I was dressing like this I slept like no problem whatsoever it was amazing I even regained what what I didn't get during the last night when I didn't get enough sleep because I had to wake up very early so yeah friends I am very satisfied <laughs> with this setup <laughs> uh, Hobo in Oman <laughs> that's crazy I never thought I'll be doing such things <laughs> but what else can you do when the cheapest option in uh, of your hotel is 52 or what was it euros I forgot already <laughs> uh, and you you have already run a little bit low in your savings so you don't want to run even lower okay my friends I'll spend a little bit more enjoyable time here in my hammock uh, do a few more things in my tablet drink the rest of my water and after one and a half hour or so I think it will be a good time to leave because around noon I could leave and there will be something like one hour walk to my hotel and 1, 1 p.m. I'm allowed to check in already so it should be good in that regard as well I'll do more explorations on some other days I think this is nice place to hang out I don't want to leave even <laughs> I don't know what do you think friends would you be happy to be in such place as well it feels very safe because I'm quite high up no people coming even if there would be some hyenas or whatever animals I feel I would feel very safe up here and it's comfortable in my hammock it's free <laughs> it's fresh air nature there wasn't ma much of nature in Oman for me so this is quite enjoyable <laughs> What do you think, friends? Would you do such things or no? <laughs> or you consider me to be a complete lunatic? <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> to do such crazy, stupid things. Yeah, you see the cars passing there. Yep, I don't know about you, but I did enjoy this night. Quite nice. 
I will enjoy my next luxury night probably even more it's still more comfortable when you have a shower and everything but it was as good as it could be in my situation actually I thought I might show you before I take off my rig I might show you how I made it you see on that branch there I tied one end of my hammock and here I tied it there and led it through here it wasn't necessary but uh, in the dark I wasn't exactly sure how strong is that branch I checked it's alive it's not a dead branch so it should be okay I could have been tying it there and then it would be going straight line well almost straight line but maybe even worse because it might be rubbing here so at least it's not rubbing so good enough and uh, this branch I didn't want to use for obvious reasons <laughs> I checked also how easily this tree breaks and it is quite easily breakable you see I broke that branch where it was in my way for hammock and also I checked how easily it breaks this species of tree and it is quite brittle so I had to be quite careful and that's where I'm standing myself now and that's where my sausage bag dropped <laughs> so I have to be quite careful not to tie to smaller branches because it's quite brittle but these are, these were big enough good enough so yeah friends here we are and that's the highway on uh, on ramp there and the big highway is yeah I, you won't be able to see it probably maybe a little bit with where the big noise is coming from but my microphone is actually cancelling that noise very efficiently so I checked my video you uh, the last clip which I made you can't hear almost any of that noise so good good for you <laughs> And there's some beauty stuff as well, some flowers. Yep, let's take off the camp and let's start moving for today. So this is how my tree looks from the ground. I don't know if you could see, probably not really, uh, up there and up inside there was my hammock and I threw already down before I climbed myself everything that can't break I'll have to pack it but now I can show you how it looks in the daylight you see there is that circle on ramp going all around us that's the big highway and behind that thing is that monumental uh, airport sign which I showed you yesterday and this is how they have made it quite beautiful just inside that circle on ramp what a good place for being a hobo in <laughs> oh, crazy okay friends let's close this chapter of the book the hobo chapter and let's enter the new chapter the luxury chapter the last night was my hobo night for zero euros and next night will be my luxury night in a nice hotel well we'll see how nice it will be but i, <laughs> I kind of suspect it will, will be nice probably bye bye nice campsite Thank you for being so welcoming during this night. It was really nice. So, it's about midday, it's about noon already. And let's move more towards the center, away from airport, to where my hotel is. This time I won't even have to use the bus. And behind there, that's the monument 
which says Muscat Airport, International Airport. I was yesterday standing there and showing it from there to you. It's actually quite an amazing effect which I wanted to show you. That when you plant these few trees and farms near highway and in all these intersection areas, you get a feeling that you are living in some green country. Like if I showed you only this and would say that this is how Oman looks like, you'd have an impression of a green country with a lot of forests, a lot of things almost tropical going on here. No, friends, see behind there, behind those trees, what's there? That's real Oman. That's what it looks like when you don't have irrigation. Look, they have built a nice place for the water to run off. But the water has found its own way around it. <laughs> Funny. And this is how it looks when they only start their green looking landscaping around the highways. You see, they put their irrigation line and along the line they plant the small shrubs and then they dig a hole for the water to go and stay instead of going out and the big irrigation point for a bigger nursery grown tree and in some while here you too will be able to hobo camp like I did tonight in one of those trees <laughs> I guess you might not want it. Although, who knows? Maybe some of you, my friends who watch me, are even crazier than me. Although I assume that most of you probably enjoy this watching in your soft armchair in heated room. Or air conditioned, I should say. <laughs> Instead of getting your own skin into this game think about it it's not so impossible until very recently i was still thinking that it's impossible for me to travel because of the financial circumstances and all kinds of other things but as they say when there is a will there is a way you can always find some way and i'm surprised that it's not difficult at all seriously it's more difficult to stay put in a place you don't enjoy where there are such a bills which you can't fully pay that's more difficult what i'm doing is not difficult think about it friends well friends good news looks like i have found my hotel for this night that's the beauty of staying in bigger hotels it's very easy to find them. You see big sign there on Google Maps. People al almost always know them as well, just in case you still can't find it. So quite easy. It's a completely different story if you rent some room in some no-name thing on the first floor of some house from the backyard entrance where it is literally nowhere written anything about that there is anything hostile like like I had in Alexandria remember that video or some other places as well Ukraine in in um, Kiev it was the same hello I have a reservation for one night Artis. Booking.com, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. It's nine reals, yes? Six slot, six, six one. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shukran. Yes. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Sixth floor. Now, friends. Do you want to see my 
luxury life. <laughs> This is, ah, that was the event which I don't need. This is what you get for 20 euros and 52 cents in Muscat Oman. Um, what's the view like? That's the view which we get here. <laughs> All the litter. Yeah. Not bad. It's okay. What do you think, friends? Everything is quite clean, actually. Which is definitely nice. Yep. Good enough, my friends, good enough. That will be some good change after my last night, what do you think? <laughs> That's how quickly you can turn from hobo to a luxury hotel inhabitant. Well, should I say luxury? Ah, you judge. <laughs> it's definitely luxury after my last night. <laughs> so that's why I'm using that term. Okay, friends, let's connect to Wi-Fi and let's do some work. Hello, good morning. I would like to check out. Thank you. Have a good day. So, my friends, good morning. This is a very strange morning for me. Well, I don't know if I can say very strange. But yeah, that's my hotel and I was up there on the sixth floor on this side. But what's happening? For one thing, that Airbnb guys, they're really annoying. That second one, which I already also uh, applied for and paid for, he not just denied as the first one, he just didn't reply at all. And Airbnb gives them 24 hours and he didn't react whatsoever. So, that booking is gone now as well. And uh, Airbnb will refund me, but it can take something like five business days, one week my money to get back which is not pleasant when they do it twice in a row <laughs> and you don't get where to sleep so basically I have nowhere to sleep and I have quite a little money so welcome to my hobo world again but this time I have decided to do the hobo procedures <laughs> in a different place to make life a little bit more interesting what i will do i was thinking already about doing it last time when i was here before trying to go to pakistan but i had quite a few things to attend in my business so i needed internet and i was quite busy and because of that i didn't do it I stayed in Muscat all the time. But my idea now, this is by the way funny, they have built this nice place to cross the big street, but there is no entrance. People are using the trail in the grass and climbing over or going through that hole. <laughs> so, 
yeah this cool thing leads nowhere <laughs> but anyway we can climb these things can we so yeah um, <laughs> I am whining about things I notice already <laughs> okay friends the idea is to go to the big sand desert uh, to a place called Bidia Al Bidia and from there it is literally on the side of the village where the big endless sand dunes begin I was thinking can I do my hobo exercises in the sand dunes? I shouldn't need any mattress or even a hammock there I can just sleep in the sand there is no rains in the forecast only problem is that in the forecast it says yesterday it said 8 degrees during night and today it said 9 degrees during night hopefully today evening which I will never see because I won't have internet they will say 10 degrees <laughs> but we don't know here again that's the way how to get out <laughs> so yeah it might be a bit cold I will probably uh, put on everything I have and maybe I need, I'll need to dig myself a little bit into the sand which should be warm and that way to survive the night that probably might be an issue but other than that it should be very beautiful and nice well friends I just exited my bus from Bidia I was two days in a desert in one amazing amazing experience I was sleeping in the desert in a very cold situation without any gear without sleeping bag without the tent and I shooted quite a lot of footage about that thing as well so if you want to see what happened that was something crazy those big high desert dunes if you want to see that uh, just wait a little bit until I edit and upload my next video that will be about Sharkia Sands which is near city probably town I should say called Bidia that was something amazing but I'm back in uh, Muscat now and here I wonder is it only A1 or something else too but in any case I exited that big bus which uh, took me from Bidia in less than four hours and from here I will need to go to Ruvi bus station where is my hotel for this night Shukran. Now then, here we go. My third hotel in this city this night this one was the cheapest <laughs> so friends are you curious what 16 and a half euros give you in muscat not bad not bad at all
I will be washing now all my desert dirt clothes. Uh, do you know such color? Dark white. <laughs> this thing is now that color, dark white. I'll be washing that. I will be taking shower myself because I'm myself dark white. <laughs> Uh, really dirty with all, all kind of desert dust. That's funny setup. <laughs> but they have all the usual stuff as well. And then, friends, I'll be going there. It is already late and I am very tired. But very happy after the two days in desert. That was amazing. See that video, guys. When, when I'll get uh, straight after this video, next one will be, uh, as soon as I get to edit it and upload, will be about that Sharkia Sands. That was amazing. Good night, my friends. Good morning, friends. Time to check out from this hotel and time to check in to some park, some tree, somewhere. We'll see where. Good morning, how are you? Hi sir, good morning. I would like to check out. Okay, sure. Sir. Hope you enjoy your stay. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have thank a good you. day. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Now then, that was it for my luxury part. <laughs> it is funny how things happen in this city. That was my place for this night. It is funny. The first night I spent like a hobo in a tree in a hammock. The second night in a nice hotel. The third night, freezing in a desert cold, without any gear, just my clothes, sleeping in sand. Then the fourth night was this hotel. And the fifth night will be either airport or some tree near airport. But I think I'll probably try airport. I saw very good uh, chairs almost like beds there and unless the staff is very problematic the sleep might be very good there and I have an early flight reasonably early so it's handy to be in airport already when I wake up so yeah friends but now I'm going, I dragged to the last moment, uh, to 12 o'clock, which was the last moment I was allowed to check out from this hotel, because I needed internet. And I also downloaded lots of things, which I will have to go through for my work. So now I'll go and get something to eat. And then I already found a few places on satellite where I might find some trees where I can hang my hammock in the shade. I desperately need shade for two reasons. One thing, I got almost burned, well, slightly burned my skin in the desert in those two days. No matter how I protected myself, I still got burned in some places, so I don't need more sunshine exposure. And another reason is that I'll have to work on my tablet and it's difficult to see the screen in sunshine. So I need shade for that one as well. I'll get something to eat and then I'll find one of those places where I can hang my hammock somewhere in shade. Hopefully one of them will work. And then I'll work and when it gets dark and no point of staying outdoors, I'll just take the bus to airport and continue in airport and there I should have even internet, hopefully. But it is tricky. 
uh, I need to log in with my phone number and sometimes the system allows to do it with my Egyptian or Irish phone number but sometimes it doesn't allow sometimes it automatically I enter Egyptian number for example and when I press OK continue it drops back to Oman prefix which renders my phone number invalid of course and then it says that it has sent the te a code to, uh, to text to SMS and of course I don't receive it because it's with Oman prefix not Egypt or Irish Egypt works more often than Irish for some reason but sometimes it doesn't work at all so yeah I don't have to take for granted that I will get the internet in airport hopefully but not, sh not surely we'll live and see and I think yeah this day should be a good day what do you think let's go for it I'm getting near to one spot which I marked on my map you see these trees they're not perfect could be doable maybe but I'm very visible and it would take time to get up them maybe this one would be easier but still I will get noticed getting up there slowly if I would get up there in the canopy I could hide easily both from the sun and from the people and then I could easily spend my day there in the hammock but you see there that is the place sorry I didn't see where I'm pointing that is the place over that river where which I was looking on the satellite map and it really looks promising you see there is a big thicket of bushes and that's exactly what I need let's actually go down here This must be a right place, I think. I have very good suspicion that I will not have to look for the next ones even. But this will be good. What is that guy doing? All good? All good. He's more scared from me than I, I should be from him. It's actually not as easy as I thought it will be. You see, there are people. And this was just a dam like structure so it's not exactly to the ground those trees yeah even more people here wow i couldn't find here at all even now oh, they're praying here okay so that means probably that it won't be all the time although that's the learning site for the cars they will be hanging out here. Let's use the time while they're praying. So they probably don't watch at me. Is there any good space? Very thorny and nowhere to hide. Hmm. I expected a better option. And I'm not sure how, the, how would they react if I would camp there in plain sight of them. Maybe, probably they would be very friendly, as they always are. But it could be a problem because I need to work. I, I have no time to chat all day at this moment, at this situation. It's not always the case, but now it is. Let's see if I can find some other trees with a thick enough canopy and low enough lower branches so I could get up. This would almost be a good spot for, well definitely good for hanging a hammock, but a little bit worse for hiding. And the biggest problem is that the canopy is too porous, how do you say it? Not solid enough to give me a proper shade. 
I need a real proper shade today, sorry guys. And what about that spot? There is better shade. And if I could get up above the lower branches of that black big tree, it might be a good hiding spot as well. This seems to be a bit better. Yeah, it could be a better shade, but maybe it will do because I don't see anything better in the near vicinity. The traffic is definitely there. The man just passed me literally here, but if I'm up, nobody would see me. So yeah, it's probably just a matter of getting up while nobody sees me. But I could just do it and see whatever happens, happens. It's, it's not a criminal thing, I shouldn't be punished for just climbing the tree. So let's try and see. I disturbed the birds. <laughs> now they are kind of... You hear? They are kind of calming down, but they were quite distressed a while ago. Now, friends, I think I am in the right spot. <laughs> you see, that's the busy road. One of the big streets in central... Forgot where I am. Muscat. <laughs> Funny. And you see, I have underground. Under me, there is quite a good height enough height for people not to look up in my opinion even though they often walk here I saw them but I'm also very you see there's quite a lot of branches around me so I'm not so visible and my green hammock helps me a lot in this way as well you see I'm quite hidden actually, the most exposed part is there and of course directly beneath but I don't think people will look up too much usually they don't unless I make some noises which I probably won't and yeah I have my water and my sausage bag, my crocs, my pocket belt, my food hanged in there everything in my reach and even this thing I left it on so that kind of helps to mask me as well a little bit <laughs> what do you think friends will this be a good spot for my day for today's work day in the tree and hopefully the sun is there a little bit the canopy could be denser but it's kind of okay and the sun will travel that direction so there might be a problem but here will be good four hours i think will be good and there if not there but there would be good as well we'll see if something i can always change a little bit and hang in some other branch nearby or something if it's really a problem but for now it seems to be good so friends I'll leave you to it and I'll come back when I see something interesting but it's time for me to do some work two men just passed without seeing me one and after a while another one you see they don't look up and i'm in the canopy they see only the tea tree trunk down there and up there is a green canopy they don't pay any attention what's in that canopy a nice spot i think i might probably last for the whole day here without being disturbed what do you think
Now then, it's already evening, not very long time till sunset, and that was the tree where I was on. <laughs> that was a crazy place, but a good one. <laughs> People, you see, there's literally a trail here, because that's a good way to cross the river, good place. And they walked under me, Something like every five minutes somebody walked. <laughs> Sometimes many people, like two people going that way, one person going against. And sometimes they went there, but sometimes they went there. But because of that stream there, they almost always went under the tree where I was. <laughs> and I was... Uh, one end was there and other end was inside there, like there. So I was hanging in those branches. So from this side it's uh, quite visible and <laughs> the funny thing is that uh, <laughs> One person <laughs> just walked by as I was telling that I was hanging in those branches and he was looking at me, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I didn't notice him. <laughs> so you see how often people come here. <laughs> and, uh, but the good thing is that nobody looks up. Uh, I, I'm like from here, it's not that high. But I wasn't here, I was up there and inside there. So it's only my feet were visible here. And also they were green hammocks, so it's not too visible. And uh, nobody noticed me, with one exception. <laughs> I was making noise. I was uh, opening my plastic bags and because of that noise, it was, I didn't pay attention that there was some man coming exactly under me. And then he heard the noise and he looked up <laughs> with very surprised, almost startled look. <laughs> What's going on there? What? But he didn't say anything and he obviously didn't report to police or anything. I don't know what could he be doing. But nothing happened. Uh, he went away and nobody else got interested in me either. <laughs> so, yeah, you see, it is well-trodden path. Uh, well, I don't know if you can see it on camera. But people are walking all the time exactly under that tree where I was hanging. <laughs> uh, that's a bit weird thing to do probably, but it worked like a charm. It was a very good day. I spent the whole day there almost, except the very morning part and now the very evening part but the most part of the day <laughs> went there <laughs> isn't that cool and it was good it was a nice shade and it wasn't hot it was very nice to be there i was able to do a lot of work it was very comfortable. I had everything I needed. I didn't have any need to go down. <laughs> and nobody bothered me. So I'm well rested and productively spent a good few hours. Now, my idea is that I want to go for my last supper. <laughs> Can I call, call it like that? I want, I, uh, yesterday I found a very nice place, an Indian or Pakistani, I'm not sure, uh, eatery, how do you call it? Uh, doggies are, uh, what do you call it? Getting clear their relationship. Who is the boss and who isn't? And there's one more doggy. So one, two, three, four now. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen many dogs here. So yeah, I found that eating place, which was very good and very cheap. 
I got fed up in a good sense of the word for one real which is how much? 2 euro 20 or 2 euro 30 something that's of that sort and I thought since I'm going to airport now after I'm finished I will have my evening in airport then I'll have tomorrow a whole day in airport in Abu Dhabi and most likely tomorrow evening and even maybe a night I'll be spending in Sohaj airport in Egypt so lots of time without proper food I have my things with me and that should get me through but I wouldn't mind eating something more proper while I still can especially if you can do it for one real so let's go for it the only bad thing about that tree was the many birds well the birds were nice but I had many overhead me overhead and one of them made me look even more hoboish than I was already looking now I'm not just <laughs> after desert but I also have a bird poo on me <laughs> and I'll be sleeping in airport it's not good because if you sleep in airport you have to look good if you don't look good if you look like a hobo you are getting disturbed a lot because you look like a hobo and I don't like hobos sleeping in airport so <laughs> Thank you, birds. You made my next night a little bit more adventurous. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it will work. Now, this is the place. Al Ruban fast food. I recommend them to you if I can. Because they're really good and really cheap. I wonder how these Indians manage to make so much good things for such a little money. Even in expensive places. Ah, and exactly when I wanted to show you they don't have that food available it turns out that they have serious food only starting from 6 p.m. which is more than one hour from now and during day they have only snacks interesting something I have never seen well, not that I have much experience with eating out <laughs> I have almost never done it during this trip in the last countries I have been I have eaten out more than probably what I have done through the rest of my life altogether before <laughs> because in these cheap countries well uh, I shouldn't say cheap even because it was even in Emirates and here in Oman, which is not exactly cheap, especially Emirates are not cheap. But these Indian restaurants, they managed to make such a good amount of tasty food for next to nothing. Like here, for one real, yesterday I ate full and they even were ready to give me more and more if I would be able to eat more for one real. If I take that same one real and go to supermarket I get very little, very little. I would need at least two, three reals to get something substantial food-wise. So yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's unbelievable how it's possible. I'm used in my northern countries that if you're eating out you're paying many times more than what you would pay for the same thing bought in supermarket you can get the same thing in Aldi or Lidl for a very small price but if you are getting the same thing in a restaurant you will pay five times or more of the same price so yeah it's obviously different here 
I got some nice mangoes instead, so all good. But now I'm thinking I have one other need. Some nature's call. <laughs> and it is quite difficult to find a place here where to do it. Huh. Let's see on the other side of the bridge. Maybe we have some thicker bushes somewhere. Although it is quite a rarity in this area to find bushes. And by the way, that place which I was considering was just opposite Central Bank of Oman. Not maybe the best idea. Here might be better. You see? That cat also thinks the same. Do you? <laughs> You're scared of me, guy. Okay, no worries. Looks like there are some wild cucumbers or pumpkins growing. No, more like cucumbers. <laughs> Strange. Do they have enough water here? Obviously, some time ago there was water. Interesting. Okay, friends. Now, all the important duties are done. We can turn to less important duties. Look for a bus to airport. What do you reckon? I still have 800 baisa, which is 0 0.8 reals, which I have in their money, which I didn't spend. And guess what? Here, the big shawarma is 800. So, I'll spend them before I go. And I still get something hot and nice to eat. Hopefully nice, we'll see. <laughs> before I enter the world of three airports with no food. So, this is my big large shawarma. And it really is quite big. Yeah, it was actually quite good. So, now I'm officially full <laughs> and ready for how much? One day and night and maybe one more night in three different airports with only this food. Should be all good. Look at these beauties. Amazing. Mid-January. I'm still continuing to enjoy that fact. Well, end of January, I should say already. Which date is it? 25th should be. Yeah, nice. Evening is setting over Muscat, capital of Oman. And this is the second time I'm trying to leave this nice place. <clears throat> it is nice. And it lures me back <laughs> in the form of declined entry in Pakistan <laughs> it lured me back and I would be quite happy to stay here longer and to travel go to Salala and other places but it is a little bit still more expensive too much expensive for my budget for some time it's okay but then I need to offset it with some cheaper country otherwise it goes over my budget and yeah if your budget is bigger than 20 euros per day including everything 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 whatever you spend literally no money besides that if your budget is bigger than 20 euros per day you might feel quite nice here. I have a little bit of a stress. I know it's okay. I'm planning, I'm calculating, I'm following my cash flows. But I know that if something happens and I have to stay here a bit longer for whatever reason, some COVID restrictions, changes in air flights and any kinds of these things. Oh, look at these trees. That's a proper hotel for you. Wow, amazing. And in that place, nobody's walking too much as well. It's the center of the roundabout. 
Nice. <laughs> if I have any more troubles <clears throat> in leaving this country, that's where I'm going. I know it already. <laughs> oh, crazy. I'll, I'll remember this place. Very useful place. <laughs> I can camp there all night and day long. <clears throat> Imagine getting high up in the canopy of that tree. Nobody will ever find you. You can do whatever you want there. Except anything too loud. Yeah. <laughs> if I would want to live that kind of life, I could afford to live in Oman as well. But. I'm not exactly eager to live like that. Call me a bit spoiled or too much used to comforts of civilization. But I do enjoy shower and do enjoy also some comfortable indoor sleep. Predictability of some kind. And one of the most important things for me electricity and internet which I desperately need for my work both of them but it is comforting to know that you have some more emergency exits just in case you need them like if I get stuck in a man for longer time and my money doesn't get bigger like in worst case what could I do I could stay every second night in a hotel and every second night in, in a tree there in that roundabout or somewhere else and in that way and here by the way it's not cold during night it's not like there in the desert here it's nice it's about 20 degrees in the night as well so no problem whatsoever so it's quite doable that you can let's say you stay every second night in hotel for 20 euros and then every second night is in the tree for zero euros which gives you average of 10 euros which exactly is my budget and sometimes you might find hotel for 16 euros or what was my first one i think even 13 or 12 was it that was a very good deal but i was never able to find any any more of these it's not exactly comfortable but it's doable you can charge all your devices and and your power bank and you can survive one and a half day uh, between the time when you have to check out from one hostel sleep through the night in a tree and then on day after that you check in in the next hotel my charge will let me through that time quite easily my power bank but the main point was that it's good to know that it is possible and doable only it's less comfortable but since we human beings are creatures who like comfort I'm going to Egypt. I didn't get to Pakistan, which was cheap. I didn't get the Indian visa, which also would be cheap place. So I'm going to Egypt, which is also a cheap place. And there it is a very comfortable feeling that you can afford everything and you can even save more money for all kinds of unpredictabilities in future and you can even after that afford to go in more expensive places because you have saved so yeah that's the situation and wish me good luck in my trying to leave this country for the second time hopefully successfully this time we'll see it's actually one quite interesting spot here you see, I need one more hand. That is the river, which even has tiny little bit of water in it. And through the river goes street. Like across the river goes one street, 
there basically is only river but there where the river continues is also another street and that street goes literally on the riverbed <laughs> imagine doing these things in our northern climates where rivers have a lot of water <laughs> yeah but here you can afford to do it and why not why not <laughs> cool I think I need to show you how translation offices look like there is one office there is another office and this is the busiest one of all and I think there were some more here I just passed them that's another certified translation but empty and that's another oh, this is tour agency so friends we are in a bus station and I need A1 and I think I see is it 61 or A1 I don't see that far and probably you neither hello Nala shukran no taxi no taxi they always offer you taxi I think it is A1 yes oh, that's a good good thing so friends I'm catching my A1 bus and see you in some other place some other time literally my next video about how I got to Egypt hopefully <laughs> we'll see all the best my friends